Dear Kelly, you and I have never met. I'm not a former SR-71 pilot or RSO. I wasn't a member of your design team at the Lockheed Skunk Works or on the assembly line that built the Blackbird. Nor was I a member of the Air Force at Beale, Mildenhall, or Kadena who kept the Blackbirds flying. I'm not even an airplane buff in the classic sense. I'm just a person that had on your SR-71 Blackbird, and it was an experience I will remember intensely for the rest of my life. There's just something about your Blackbird, Kelly, that words don't adequately describe. Anyone who has been near a Blackbird and felt its presence knows what I'm talking about. It's a feeling in your gut, and instantly you want to be part of it. Part of what I call the Blackbird family. Today, Kelly, you are being honored for your design work on the SR-71, and justly so. To me, the SR-71 is not only your greatest aircraft design, it is perhaps the greatest aircraft ever built. I've heard it said that you considered the Blackbird the most fascinating challenge of your career. No wonder. It was a design that was so advanced that everything that touched it had to be new. New manufacturing processes, new tools, new materials, a whole new approach. You built an operational stealth aircraft a decade before most of the world had even heard the term. It was a design so far ahead of its time that it retired before time could catch up with it. In times of crisis, the Blackbird provided six presidents with a unique and critical view of the world. The Blackbird served this country for just over a quarter of a century. In that entire time, it stood in a class of one. To me, the Blackbird is much more than a technical marvel. It's an airplane that gets inside you, an aircraft that causes the adrenaline to flow just by looking at it. Kelly, your Blackbird is the stuff dreams are made of. model plane sitting in a young child's room, proof that everything is possible, that the sky isn't the limit. And it's the poster hanging on the office wall of a middle-aged engineer, testimony that yes, even in the real world, miracles do occur. The SR-71 embodies all that excites people about aerospace. Its crew seems part pilot, part astronaut. The Blackbird itself appears part airplane, part spacecraft. The typical Blackbird fan is a cross-section of America. It's your grandfather, your niece, your son. It's the wide-eyed young kid that buys an aircraft book at the National Air and Space Museum. It's the family that traveled hundreds of miles to an air show just to see a Blackbird in person. It's the people on the Air Force Base that stopped what they were doing to watch an SR take off. Everyone, every time, no matter how many times they'd seen it before. And it's the pilot who last flew the Blackbird 20 years ago, who has the look in his eye that says, I flew the best aircraft ever made. The look that can barely contain the desire to get in an SR just one more time and light the When Blackbird 972 made its final record-setting flight to Dulles Airport, I watched the television with mixed emotions. This was the Blackbird's final flight. An aircraft that was the very definition of speed and power would fly no more. But my sadness was tempered by the knowledge that this plane would now truly belong to the nation, coming to rest in the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum. Now millions would be able to do what I had done, be near a blackbird, be part of the family. Kelly, in the years to come, whenever I want to experience your airplane's majesty, I will remember the time I spent with your Blackbird. The smell of JP-7 fuel, the feel of it on the soles of my shoes, the sound of an air starter wind up, the Teb ignite, and I'll put on the film that we shot during those incredible weeks in 1987. I'll watch it, feel it, because in movies, Kelly, like in our memories, your Blackbird will fly forever. Congratulations, Kelly, and thank you. Devin Hawker, assistant cameraman, Blackbird, the movement.